Hey everyone, so welcome back. It's the third part of my three-part series of post-college life and the last one is just going to be about how much fun I've had, my mental stability, my emotion, my emotional instability and just everything in the range of how I've been feeling post-college. Post-college, yes. Um, Please excuse any uh, technical errors and uh, linguistic errors and speaking errors just because this is not rehearsed and I'm just speaking off of my mind even though I have a, a tiny list to look at um, for the majority <clears throat> of the part I'm just just speaking as I'm thinking. So um, I guess I'll just get straight to the point and say that I am not as happy as I used to be in Southern California and you know I think happiness is so subjective and it's so temporary and thank goodness it's temporary because you know in just an instant once you feel gratitude and once you feel positivity you can instantly feel content and I'm glad that that's the way that it is and that I don't have to achieve anything to feel happy but at the same time, I think being happy is really good for your mental health and just your overall well-being because, you know, your cells are happier, you have better health, and so on and so forth. With that being said, I think my happiness just is askew from where it used to be just because, you know, I'm not around the people I used to be around. I'm not in the same area that I've gotten so comfortable in and I'm just not where I thought I would be and what I need to do is just mainly change my mentality on that. And, um, you know, I am definitely adjusted to Sacramento. I know the streets better. I'm slowly starting to just kind of make new friends and I think post-college is a little bit of what I thought it would be. Um, the uncertainty factor is definitely there and the happiness factor is not where I thought it would be. I thought I would be really happy after college ended because, you know, you don't have any more exams, no more quizzes, no more reading to do. Well, scratch that because I am in school again. But I just thought I would be so much happier, that I would be evolving into the person I would be. And um, so far, I feel like I'm taking baby steps towards the person I want to become. But overall, my emotions have been running wild. I remember last year, a month after I had moved back to Sacramento, the night before my, birth uh, my birthday, I had so much anxiety and I was crying the night before and the day of my birthday I was at work at Nordstrom and thank god I was at work because it just distracted me from my own thoughts and once I got home I just felt uh, so alone and I think I just cried myself to sleep and um, that's very different from how I spent my 21st birthday you know surrounded by friends in Vegas and having a fun time. Going back to my very first video as to talking about why I want a full-time job for the health benefits, you know, I'm not shy and I'm not scared to say that I want to go to therapy. And the reason why I need to go back to therapy is because I feel like I'm mentally regressing. Like, I don't feel the same. And I noticed it because um, way back in high school, I used to be really scared of being touched. And I think that's coming back to me because in college it wasn't as bad like I really didn't like strangers touching me but now that I'm at home like my hands touching each other like freaks me out especially when I'm going to sleep like now I have to sleep like a starfish because I just can't have any part of my body touching me because it just reminds me of a very dark moment in my life and before it wasn't like that you know when I was in college, I was totally fine with like my thighs touching, my legs touching, my arms touching each other. But now I, I can't have that. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is that living with my stepdad has really made me go back like several steps. And I remember last year I was speaking with a professional at my college and she was really scared for me that moving back home would cause me to regress and that I would change in a negative way. And I was like, no, no, like, I'll be fine. Like, do you know how strong I am? Like, I'm going to be fine. 
And then turns out she was right. And of course, she's a professional. She has a freaking doctorate degree. Like she knows what she's talking about. And for me, I just um, held on to that mentality that I'm like, no, I'm not going to change. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be stronger. And alas, um, I think just being in the same space as my stepdad and having to see him all the time, just it, it on the inside, I think it makes me a little bit angry. And the more I see him every day, I get a little bit more angry and angry. I get more annoyed. I get more flustered and I'm just like so irritated. <sighs> and I strongly believe that sharing the same space as your abuser does things to you mentally. Like, I don't, I don't even know. I feel like I'm in high school again trying to reheal myself when in college I felt like I was almost fully healed and that I was getting stronger and I was gonna like become a warrior and not a victim. And now I feel like, I feel like it's like, it just happened and I'm being a victim again. And... I don't know, um, that's why I have to move out because as much as I love my little sisters and they're in the room right now with me, I have to do this for myself, like for myself, for my, my, my mental health, my emotional health, like I need to do this for me because I just can't be in the same space as him, like it's, uh, I can't do it. Moving forward and moving on to a different topic, this summer I actually deactivated my Instagram and you know I had done it a few times before where I just disappeared for about a week and then I came back because I was addicted. Using that word very very loosely, you know I was kind of addicted to Instagram and I was on it all the time and I tried to delete it and then went back like the next day or the next week. But this time in, I think it was in June or maybe July that I deactivated and I haven't touched it since. I haven't even re-downloaded it on my phone and I haven't logged in into it through my computer just because, I don't know, I think just looking at all my um, college friends doing stuff, moving forward with their careers and the whole shebang, just having fun, traveling, doing stuff, just got to me and usually I never have FOMO which is the fear of missing out but I suddenly I started having that and I don't know what it was doing to me it was just not anything good so I was like let me just delete Instagram let me take a break from it and I'm so happy that I did because I feel mentally better already like I don't worry about what other people are doing and you know of course Instagram is a total facade we only post our best moments everything's heavily edited and with that being said I just don't want to see other people's best moments because I myself am not at my best I feel like that sounds very egotistical and selfish but um I think you know, in the spring going to the summer, I'm just easily triggered and I don't want to fall into a depression. And I feel like that was one of the main factors that made me, oh my god, really feel like I was lonely and that I was going nowhere in life. And just one bad thought leads to another bad thought, leads to a dark, <laughs> leads to a dark thought that I could just fall into a really dark place and I didn't want to do that and I was like if deleting my Instagram is gonna make me feel better then I'm gonna do it and it has made me feel better and <laughs> I'm so grateful for that because uh, whew, I just don't want to compare myself to others and I think that was a very good step I feel like my anxiety and my depression go hand in hand however I try to like fight my depression and it's so hard to fight those dark thoughts because those thoughts are your own and I don't know where they come from but sometimes they're just so strong that you want to like follow suit and just go with it but then you have to fight because that's not you even though it's your thoughts it's not you it's not who you want to be it's not where I want to be I don't want to be six feet under so I try to just listen to my anxiety and I don't go places where it makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't do anything that makes me feel uncomfortable because your mental health is so important. Oh, I feel like this year I've really focused on my mental health and that really helps 
that really has helped me feel a lot better because you know I'm not crying because I'm gonna go somewhere and I'm gonna see people I don't know or or that I'm crying because I don't know anyone and I don't know it's just a whirlwind and I just try to avoid that disaster by just staying home I think staying home is really good for me and there's nothing wrong with staying home so if you want to stay home it's okay whatever makes you feel better and I think that would be the end of my video today because I feel like I've been rambling a lot but I've said a lot of good stuff um, in the minutes before so I hope this has helped um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I will see you next time thank you and bye <laughs>